Good afternoon. I'd like to call this meeting of the City Planning Commission to order. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is introduction of the uh, committee members and staff. Jim, would you like to start? Mike Vandersteen, Mayor and Chairman. Chad Tomczyk, Director of Planning and Development. Stephen Kowalski, Planning and Planning Department. Uh, next item is, uh, does any of the commissioners have any conflict of interest with items on the agenda this evening? Seeing none then, we'll move on to the minutes from our uh, meeting on September 24th. I'm looking for a motion to approve those minutes. Thank you for that motion in support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Then we'll move on to items for discussion and possible action. Uh, the first one is item 3.1, which is a conditional use application by George B. Yang to convert the second floor office space into two apartments at 1227 North 9th Street. Steve? I'm on? All right. Um, Jeff Smees is here from Smee's Architect, who's representing uh, George B. Yang with regards to uh, the proposal at uh, 1227 North 9th Street and 831 uh, Michigan Avenue. Presently, this facility, uh, George B. Yang operates uh, home health care out of the first floor of it. It used to be, I believe, I think on the, it even says on the picture, Scott's Home Improvements. So this is the south east corner of the intersection of Michigan Avenue and North 9th Street. When you take a look at the photos that are on uh, uh, the computer right now, you can see there's a one-story uh, aspect to the building and then a two-story aspect to the building. And, and so the first story uh, is going to remain commercial, commercial tenants. But in the <coughs> second story, presently on the east side of the building, it's used for storage <coughs> and just uh, small commercial purposes. And so what the applicant would like to do is to convert that back into two apartments. Approximately about 10, uh, maybe about 10 years ago, it was converted from apartments to commercial. I believe it might've been Allstate or State Farm? Burkhardt. Burkhardt, okay, thank you. And, and then they converted those apartments into office space. And now this gentleman, Mr. Yang, is looking to convert that second floor space back into two apartments. Um, uh, right now, it's staff's understanding that this uh, space is vacant and used for just a little bit of storage. Um, as plan commission is aware, both the staff and plan commission have been uh, encouraging downtown living, and this is another uh, uh, opportunity for that to occur. So staff was recommending approval. The only comment that uh, we had was with regards to a dumpster enclosure. Presently, there's not one there. They don't necessarily need one, but if dumpsters are gonna be on site, they would have to construct the enclosure. And we'd prefer to see that um, on the east side of the parking lot and not along the 9th Street side. So staff was recommending approval of the conditional use permit and the applicants here. I don't believe there's any neighbors here for this one, Mayor. Thank you very much, Steve. Would the applicant's representative like to make any comments? Stairs still are, they look just like they were apartments because uh, Burkhart, when they were in there, they basically put desks in the room. So there's, there's kitchens that are in there, there's a living room and, and two bedrooms in each of the two apartments. So. Nothing really looks any different. He's not intending to change anything at all because he's just sprucing it up and putting some new paint and stuff on the walls. That's about it. All right, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions? 
Any motions? Move to Nine. approve subject to staff, staff recommendations. Okay, we have a motion and a, and a second. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks for your presentation tonight and good luck with the project. Item 3.2 is a conditional use and variance application by um, uh, A Million Dreams, Inc. to operate a family enrichment and child care center at 1423 North 29th Street. Steve. All right. Uh, the applicants are here, Angel Berry and Nina Bemis, as, long, as well as their <coughs> architect and contractor, Nick Cardis, and Joel Vaness from Abacus Architects. Um, what we're taking a look at today and... Um, you guys will probably be able to explain some of the uses better than I can, but I'm gonna go through some of the information you provided. We're taking a look at uh, 1423 North 29th Street. Um, I believe this was the old Superior Electric, thank you. Um, it's been vacant for a number of years, has been for sale for a number of years, and so there's been the opportunity for uh, uh, Miss Barry and Bemis to take a look at the property and to potentially come up with a million dreams, which is uh, a proposal to operate a family enrichment and child care center. Um, this is a, a phased development and in the staff report and uh, uh, there's a little bit of information that discusses and I'm sure the applicants can speak to how that phasing will occur. Um, their center would operate on multiple shifts for both full-time and part-time employees in order to provide 24 hours of care per day, seven days per week. Um, they would be providing healthy meals and snacks, as well as entertainment and learning activities appropriate for all ages, age groups as needed. Clients will include families in Sheboygan and the surrounding communities, particularly those families in need of second or third shift uh, care and weekend care, early morning care, and special needs care. Um, some of the site improvements, I don't know if we can get into the site plan, I think it's later in the report. Um, uh, they would be constructing 17 new um, parking spaces along Superior Avenue. I think it's way at the end. Um, which would be new spaces that would be created. Let's keep going. There we go. So at the bottom of the page is Superior Avenue. And, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Superior uh, Avenue is to the left, and 29th Street is to the bottom, and 28th Street is to the north. So you can kind of see what they're looking at doing is um, they would be remodeling the existing facility, both exterior and interior. Um, they would be uh, um, doing improvements at the uh, intersection of 29th Street and Superior Avenue. They're greening that up and looking to include, uh, uh, to install a sign in that area. There's quite a bit of uh, different traffic movement. So by eliminating and putting that green space, they've done a drive-through for people to come along 29th Street, and then they've added parking along <coughs> Superior Avenue. In addition, there's play space that would be available. You can see how that's fenced. It's basically east of the building and goes all the way to 28th Street. Um, they do show some uh, vinyl fencing that they're proposing to install. Um, nice, attractive looking fence along those areas. So those are a, a couple of the um, site improvements that they're looking at. Uh, the applicants have indicated that with the number of large employers in our county who run multiple shifts, there's not adequate off-shift care available to employment seekers, and it's their understanding that the companies struggle with employees unable to find child care, and they hope to rectify that issue. Um, in the scope of special needs children, the situation is worse, and they've experienced firsthand about the lack of quality trained care available for the special needs, and they're hoping that A Million Dreams can provide that care for those individuals who need that. Um, the uh, Family Center would be much more than just child care. It would be a resource place for all families and provide services such as support groups, educational classes to encourage healthy living, good parenting, on-site therapy for children with special needs, respite care for teens and young adults, and advocacy for low-income families. 
the location at uh, 9th and or 29th and Superior is ideal due to its easy access to many of the major thoroughfares in the city and easy access to 23 and 43. It also allows for uh, bus service to the facility. Uh, the site offers sufficient green space to promote healthy outdoor activities to the children in their care. Um, the size of and location and the layout of the building lends itself to their vision of a home-like child care center. It has ample room to accommodate large number of children, large safe space for gross motor skill activities with sensory integration playroom and accommodation for overnight children so they may have a comfortable and restful sleep. Um, a million dreams. Uh, will be creating jobs, but more importantly, will be offering the services that many families currently lack, so they may better seek a better quality of life through employment and continual education and providing child daycare all hours of the day and all days of the week uh, to clients in a time of need. We'll be appealing to an economically diverse clientele, some of which are already seeking these services and others who will be further drawn to the community knowing that these services are available. A um, couple of just staff comments. Uh, there, the, presently, there are five lots that make up the site together. Um, uh, the applicant will just be responsible for combining those into one property. Um, one of the items on the site plan is when you look at the fence along 28th Street, it does look, there, uh, the, the right away along 28th Street, it looks like the sidewalk is directly behind the curb. So the property line may be a little bit further to the uh, west, so you just want to know where that property line is before you uh, fence that, just to make sure that that fence is on uh, your property. Um, again, this is a phase development, so there may be uses of the building that happen before others, and so you just need to work with the building inspection department in terms of use and occupancy and things of that. Uh, nature. They do show a uh, conceptual uh, drawing for a monument sign to be located at that uh, corner of, of 29th and Superior. They'll eventually submit a sign permit for uh, the sign itself. A couple of variances. One is to have a six foot solid fence in the front yard. Again, we're just talking about that little stretch along 28th Street. Um, the reason being is obviously they want to the, the children to be in an area that is fenced and not have the ability for balls or kids to have the opportunity to get out onto the street. Um, to have a zero foot paving setback, that's already existing. That's at the south uh, uh, west corner of the property line it, uh, where it shared uh, access previously with the garage. Other than that, staff is recommending approval subject to the conditions you have before you. The applicants are here and there is a neighbor here as well. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Would the applicants like to make uh, some comments? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Uh, Alderperson Boren? people uh, that are, that own this, what is their uh, background in this field of, of child care? Please except? step to the lectern to respond. Uh, <clears throat> great. Hi. Hi, I'm Angel Berry. Uh, I've been working with children for eight and a half years full time in my home. Um, I'm also a mom of a 19 year old and a 21 year old. So, um, and I have experience working with um, support groups um, and uh, um, family organizations such as this in West Bend um, prior to that. What kind of staff are you going to have to hire to, for your uh, clients with special needs? Qualified staff. Uh, depends on the client. It depends on the child's needs. Um, we uh, already have some people interested in coming to work for us when we do open. So we've got uh, some nurses, uh, a CNA, a uh, special education teacher, um, but as those clients grow and as those needs grow, then we'll be looking to meet whatever qualifications that they need. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any other questions? Marilyn? Thank you. It sounds wonderful. It's a great plan. Thank you. And of course, second and third shift is definitely needed. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Good. Thank you. OK, and then uh, did we have a neighbor here who wanted to respond? Yeah, it's, it sounds good to me, too. I just came to get more information. I'm probably, I think you talked to my wife already. We did. And 
She can't make it. She has a kid. But we just wanted to see what was going on. It does sound like a good project, and it sounds like you got everything covered. Okay, and thanks. Thank you for coming you. tonight. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion on the floor? No. Okay, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Good luck with your project. Next item is 3.3. This is a communication uh, from January 19th of, 19, of 2020 and, and 219 of 20 and 319 of 20 from Chris Markline, Director of Development for Van Horn Real Estate, requesting encroachments for the Kingsbury Village Apartments. Steve. All right. Um, what we're taking a look here is, uh, as people have probably seen, there's some uh, grading taking place at the Kingsbury project. This is part of the site plan that was previously approved. Part of the conditions of approval uh, and put on the conditional use permit was to obtain the necessary encroachment permits. So that's what's before you today. The encroachments that you see are um, kind of highlighted in yellow here. You can see one is for a very small triangular piece next to the driveway where there's some sidewalk that will connect from the private development to 10th Street. The other is for the driveway itself that's connecting into 10th Street. And then there is a bit of sidewalk on the uh, river side of the units along the river that is gonna be in uh, the city of right away. These are all improved rights away and we've previously looked and discussed them and now we're formally going through the encroachment process. So staff was recommending approval of the request. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, anyone else that wants to speak about this? Joe Bernowski from JB Design is here representing them. Okay. If you're gonna speak, you have to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any uh, motions or questions? Thank you for that motion and support. That motion is before us for discussion. Under discussion, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Joe, just a quick question for you. I noticed on your website it says that they're condominiums, not apartments. Is, is it a mix of the two? They started out as condos, and when we originally had negotiated the development agreement, they were going to build condos, and then they ran into some concerns with financing and something else, so I think they're all apartments. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion's passing. Good luck with the project. Okay, our next meeting we're looking at is October 29th. And uh, next I'd look for a motion to adjourn, Jerry. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Very good, we stand adjourned, thank you.